he comes in like a, a blast of air off the desert. And uh, by the time you get through spending an hour or two with him, he's totally refreshing. Interesting, informed, well-bred, and in his, in the main, well-mannered. But a tough son of a bitch. Here comes the trip way from out of the back. And she climbs it up perfectly. Let's see if she jumps the gun. Here comes the tail five. On the outside is Muncie. Notre Dame. Muncie. Notre Dame. Muncie. 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 But on the outside, it is Bill Muncie. And Muncie is gone. And the second second with a flash of fire. It looks like he might have blown a supercharger. And here they come. And boy, it's a boat race. Watch them, five seconds, there won't be a false start. Here comes Miss Ripway. There's Miss Wahoo on the inside corner. Here comes Miss Ripway. But here comes Musty. Man, I want to tell you, he is flying. If he can hit that starting line just right, it's going to be way on his way to the victory. He's going to leave everybody else in his rooster tail. And he does. Here he comes. He is flying. The first place boat going into the Western Row, oh, he almost lost it. As we're in the eighth lap of the final heat of the World Cup, the other eight boat going into the West Turn. Okay, look at them come, head and head, down the chute. On the outside, closest to us is Muncie and Thriftway. And he goes to the lead now. Off camera, Bill Mussey was a, was a very, very kind, um, very, very caring person. Uh, cared very much about the people that worked for him and treated us all as family. Uh, he was, um, he would be very, uh, very much hurt if, if uh, anybody had a negative feeling about him uh, or he had a perception that somebody wasn't happy. Uh, he'd always want to try and get to the bottom of it, deal with it, and um, very, very caring person, tough guy on the camera. Uh, and a lot of it was his own psyche, uh, getting him, you know, in, in, in a position to, to be a challenger. And uh, off camera, very much of a family person. Bill, yeah, he's a race boat driver. Anybody that ever came to, know, to be around Bill Muncie knew what Bill Muncie was. They knew he was a race boat driver. They knew he was the best. And uh, what kind of guy is he? Well, stick around 10 minutes and see what kind of guy he is. I never expected to be a professional racing person. I'm a marketing man by choice and by education. And uh, I graduated from General Motors Institute of Technology and I did my postgraduate work at uh, Rollins in Winter Park, Florida. The racing just seemed to end up being a fun thing I was doing that as an appendage to some of the marketing responsibilities I've had in my career, it worked just beautifully. He was born uh, November 12, 1928. Um, I believe it was Royal Oak, Michigan. and. Uh, by that time, uh, Grandpa Muncie was pretty well established. And uh, I've spoken with people that like went to school with him. And uh, he, was, he was pretty comfortable. Um, on the other hand, uh, my grandpa was, was pretty hardcore about uh, money and about being well-to-do and not forget where you came from and not, not forget that you'll get where you need to go if you bust your buttons and you're not afraid to sweat. And, and Grandpa was hardcore about that. And by the time Dad was eight years old, his idea of a good time was to sit down in front of the piano for like six hours a day, and nobody had to ask him to do it. He just got to, to drive this piano, play this piano, and he made pretty sounds with it. And pretty soon, you know, he got into reading music. And it was he, the marriage between him and music just took off at such a tender age. And of course, it's just thrilled my grandmother to, to no end. And my grandfather's just wondering if his, his son was being kind of strange. But he just picked up on it and was very comfortable. And pretty soon he got into, you know, once you read it, you can uh, speak all kinds of language and music. So he got into other things and you know, eventually became pretty proficient um, with the, the alto sax and uh, went on in his teen years to, to get more seriously involved uh, across the board as far as music went. Bill's father was a very successful Chevrolet dealer in Detroit, and his mother was a, a pianist. Um, 
she would play during Christmas, get jobs in department stores, and uh, she'd play in, in parades, maybe on floats, playing the piano. And so she encouraged Bill in music and art. And he loved music. He was one of those uh, children that would come home from school and practice four hours on the piano without, without being told to practice. He loved his music. And I would say that music was his uh, first love during his life. He was in a creative writing class, Rollins College, which is in Florida. And uh, he looked across uh, the room and he saw this gal named Kitsy Graham. And uh, it's like he was smitten right there. As dad was, was dating my mom and then right after uh, they got married, he got drafted. Um, Dad got shipped off. Of 20,000 troops that went to Korea, um, 500 of them were diverted to Germany. And because Dad was an accomplished musician, they sent him to Germany to be the band leader of the band, and I can't remember what part of the military it was. My mother laid down the law that said, uh, okay, I'm not going to be married to a soldier, and I'm not going to be married to a musician. I know it's going to be something else. And at least she said it that way. I don't know that she was ever that arbitrary, but that was the way she felt. And about that time, um, one of the bands that my dad played in, I had the he wasn't steady, and he'd be the first one to tell you that he was the last chair. But he had a chance to play with uh, Gene Krupa, who was a pretty well-to-do well uh, swing band leader, and uh, Harry James. Uh, once again, he'd say he's last chair, but just, I've been told that um, just getting in the band was huge. And uh, this started, then Gene Krupa, if the way I'm told the story, Gene Krupa got uh, sideways with the law with regards to drugs. Now, my grandparents being uh, very devoted Baptists, and my dad raised that way, um, they got pretty concerned. And it was like, whoa, we can't have our little boy. He wasn't so little then, but to them he always was, right? We can't have him getting involved with nefarious characters like this, so let's try and, let's try and uh, get him interested in something else. Well, Dad started racing boats when he was around 12. Those are outboards, of course, and messed with inboards, if I remember right, in his teens. And at about this time, my grandfather stepped up and said, okay, if you want to race such and such a class, you know, I'll arrange for a mechanic, and you can have access to, uh, to whatever equipment you want and whatever uh, engine parts and components. And I remember Dad making jokes about it. He'd do inventory at the Chevy dealership, and he'd go, one for Dad, one for me, one for Dad, one for me. And he'd... Uh, he put together his racing program. And so to a certain extent, they successfully diverted him from, uh, from music. And my mom never said anything about not being married to a boat driver. So like he was kind of like skating clean. Everybody was happy with him. And I guess until he was about 23 or 24 years old, he was pretty content to be working down at Grandpa's or Ed Muncy Chevrolet and uh, go racing his boats and, and chase his lovely wife around. Well, it's funny, and, and it's, I've heard of other boats like My Sin and other boats that were, had that kind of ambience about him. But, and I remember asking Dad, why did you name it that? And he said because he wanted um, his dad to be proud of him and that when Dad, Grandpa Muncy, would come down to the races, he could turn to his friends and his buddies uh, and say, there goes my son. And uh, that's why he named it that. Bill had been driving limited in boards for, for a number of years and was really quite successful in developing a name. And in 1950, um, he got tapped to drive the Great Lakes and he, he qualified the boat very, very fast. And in the actual race, blew the bottom out of the boat and, and sank in his first, in his debut race as an unlimited driver. But that couple of laps that he had, that old boat flying faster than I ever had, was enough to really impress Ted Jones. And that led Ted Jones to uh, invite Bill to drive the Thriftway. But before Bill left Detroit to come to Seattle and drive the Thriftway, Horace Dodge asked him in 1955 to drive the Dora My Sweetie, which was an outdated step hull that, that really never had much of a chance. In, in fact, um, Bill wasn't able to qualify the boat. Prior to coming to Seattle and driving the Thriftway for Ted Jones, which had to be one of you know, the premier jobs in the sport, Bill's only two real unlimited adventures had been kind of disappointing, with the, the Great Lakes having the bottom fall out and the Dora My Sweetie not even qualifying. Dorian um, was born in 1955. He's, he's two years younger than me. And uh, we, it's not that you're making me think about the chronology, it had been just after he was born, uh, one or two years old, that we moved out to the Northwest. 